We're not gonna get the plug pulled. We're funded. We're gonna be fine. Well, crap. Hello, everybody, and welcome. It appears that Take-Two Interactive will close down their Seattle office and lay off 70 people. This is troubling because Seattle is where Intercept Games is located, the studio developing Kerbal Space Program 2. In addition to that, people found this tweet from a developer who claimed to have been laid off and that he had worked on KSP2 in some capacity. These pieces of information plus some additional things prompted the community to assume the worst. KSP2 is dead. It's over. Gone before it really had a chance. Potentially. Saying that today was a roller coaster ride, but not in a good way, would be an understatement. But since I'm someone who does not like to jump to conclusions, I have spent the better part of today, my day off, trying to get to the bottom of this. And in this video, I want to talk about what do we really know? What are the potential scenarios for what's going to happen? And we're also going to talk about information consumption in general. Even at the risk of this video aging like fine milk over the next 24 hours. If you are a long-time viewer, you know that doing deep dives on KSP2 development is something I like to do. But if you're new here and this type of thing interests you, go and hit that subscribe button. Even with all the turmoil, there is still plenty to talk about in the coming weeks and months around that topic. And I'm really trying to reach that 100,000 subscriber milestone before the year runs out, so your help would be really appreciated. Alright, so what do we actually know? There's a lot floating around, but so far we have three verified items. A warn notice, a tweet, and a statement by a spokesperson. Let's go through each of them. Washington State has something called the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification, WARN in short. It requires companies to give a 60 days notice when they plan to lay off employees. From the official state government website, we can learn that 70 people are going to be laid off because Take-Two Interactive Software is going to close their office in Seattle. The notice was submitted on April 29, 2024, and layoffs will start on June 28, 60 days later. But this process can be sped up by appropriate severance packages so the actual closure could be even earlier. Since as far as we know, Take-Two only has one office in Seattle, and that is Intercept Games, this could in fact mean that the entire studio that has worked on Kerbal Space Program 2 so far will shut down within the next two months. If we count the people working for Intercept Games based on the credits in KSP2 version 0.21, we arrive at 76. But I know that a couple of those are not working from Seattle, something Nate Simpson told me during our interview back at the Space Crater Day in October. That leads us to this tweet by software engineer Wesley Thompson from the same day that the war notice went up. He claims to have been laid off and that he has worked on telemetry and service-based coding for KSP2 and various other private division titles. Notice that he says private division, not intercept games, also in his Twitter bio. In the credits to Kerbal Space Program 2, we can see that he was an online systems engineer for private division information technology. Based on this, we can deduct that he has not been working on the game itself, rather on things like maybe the private division launcher or something related to the build pipeline of KSP2 that feeds into Steam. So with these two pieces of information, there is smoke, thick smoke even, but not a smoking gun pointing to the definitive murder of KSP2. At least not yet. Let's focus on our third piece of information, the spokesperson state. Actually, there were two of them. First, Alan Lewis from Take-Two said this to Eurogamer. On 16th April, Take-Two announced a cost reduction program to identify efficiencies across its business and to enhance the company's margin profile while still investing for growth. As part of these efforts, the company is rationalizing its pipeline and eliminating several projects in development and streamlining its organizational structure, which will eliminate headcount and reduce future hiring needs. 
company is not providing additional details on this program. Basically, it's just a bunch of corpo jargon and doesn't mean anything aside from we're cutting costs and firing people. I honestly pity anyone who has to release words like this under their name and would recommend changing jobs because your life is being drained by a corporation that does not give a damn about you. The second statement comes directly from Private Division, the publisher of Kerbal Space Program 2, and it reads The label continues to make updates to Kerbal Space Program 2 and plans to release Weta Workshop Game Studios' Tales of the Shire, a The Lord of the Rings game in the second half of 2024. This prompted game developer to title their article Take-Two confirms Kerbal Space Program 2 is safe despite Seattle layoffs. Which is not true at all. Notice the language. The label continues, meaning private division, not Intercept Games. What does make updates to Kerbal Space Program 2 actually mean? Just released the recently hinted at patch.22 and then never touching it again? Will there be another team working on it? Or the same team, but under a different organizational umbrella? The article and statements annoy me on multiple levels. Let's start with the journalistic aspect of it. Why do journalists always try to get statements from people with first-hand knowledge? The answer is so that they can provide accurate information to the public. If you get worthless corpo-speak statements like above, then you can't go out and claim KSP2 is safe in your title. I know online media has to rely on clickbait, but as we said when I was a journalist, the story does not support what the title claims, and if you have such a mismatch, you are misleading your readers. That is not providing accurate information to the public. Coincidentally, this was the reason why I didn't want to do a video on this immediately without having heard back from my sources. Which unfortunately I haven't until time of filming. Who knows, maybe when this video goes live there's already going to be some official explanation somewhere. Speaking of official, the second thing that annoys me, these statements by Take-Two and Private Division. Not only did the latter provide the exact same meaningless word salad to me without considering a single one of my questions, it is actually pretty insulting to both the public as well as media. A simple, we cannot comment on this matter at the moment, would have been enough and more honest. Or send a poop emoji like Twitter since Elon took over, it basically has the same value. As I said in the beginning of this segment, the warn notice, the tweet and the statements are the three verified pieces of information. There's a lot of unverified information floating around and some weird things happening. For instance, the job listings on Intercept Games' website leading to seemingly dead links. That does not confirm anything, unfortunately, since this could also be an indication of Take-Two's job listing system being out of whack. Also. Some people were sharing pictures of LinkedIn profiles from Intercept Games employees showing them open to work. One of that was from community manager Dakota Callahan, but that was apparently old since the indicator is not present on his page now. However, it is present for instance on the profile of Grace Tui K, who is listed as associate producer in the credits as well as for at least one more employee or former employee. Companies have a baseline employee turnover rate. Seeing the open to work indicator on a handful of Intercept Games employee profiles doesn't have to mean anything. They could also be turned on since ages ago and have nothing to do with the current situation. This indicator alone is not telling us anything, unless all of Intercept staff suddenly flag themselves like this on LinkedIn. And this leads me to the part where we talk about what's really going on. Potentially. Because as of time of filming, this is just speculation, unfortunately. But the scenarios we're going to discuss now remain valid even after an official communication has taken place. Option 1. This is all a big misunderstanding and case B2 is fine and will continue to be developed by Intercept Games until it is really done. Unlikely if we're being honest based on the information we have. Option 2. Intercept Games as a studio is being shut down 
But the team, or parts of the team, continue working on KSP2 either directly on the private division or within some other corporate container. As I mentioned, some members of the team already work fully remote, so maybe they are doing a distributed development kind of thing. This would also be in line with the statement saying the label continues to make updates to Kerbal Space Program 2. This might be something they would actually do. Get rid of the office costs and some staff, but keep some or most of the team to continue to work, just organized differently. Option 3. A repeat of the star theory thing back in early 2020, when Private Division took over the KSP2 license back from the original development studio and opened their own, resulting in the founding of Intercept Games. Only that now Intercept is being shut down and KSP2 will be handed off to somebody else. Honestly, while we do have the star theory precedent, I don't think it is very likely. Option 4. Our worst fears come true and after June 28, development of Kerbal Space Program 2 will cease forever. I don't want to dwell too long on this, because when you are watching this video, things might have already developed in a different direction. The situation is very fluid at the moment and a lot of questions are left unanswered. Still, I wanted to make this video to maybe show you how I try to approach difficult situations like this without jumping the gun too early, claiming KSP2 is dead or something like that without any real information backing it up. And even if any of the four options listed above, or a fifth one that I haven't co even considered, have already been confirmed when you are watching this, this is something you should still keep in mind. Whenever there is an outrageous claim like KSP2 is dead, instead of sharing it, try to verify the information. For instance, the tweet by Wes. Anyone can write a tweet like that, but he does have a website with his full name and there is a person of that same name listed under Private Division Information Technology in the KSP2 credits. All of this is public available, at least if you own KSP2. Everyone can look that up. Then there is the clickbait headline by Game Developer, which didn't help. The actual statement is very fuzzy, but it's the only official statement we can go on as of now. Media nowadays often feeds off of outrage farming. Whatever stirs the pot up the most is going to get the most clicks. Therefore, greed results in the spread of misinformation. If a headline makes you angry or solicits any other strong emotion, take a step back and try to verify the story with available information. Because most of the times the real information is out there and often learning it results in the highly emotional title or story being less of a thing than it made itself out to be. Before I finish, I want to address the clip of Nate Simpson during our interview in October claiming that they are funded and nobody is going to pull the plug. I used it as a bit of a joke in the beginning, sorry Nate if you're watching, but I don't fault him for saying that at that point in time. Because even as creative director, these types of corporate dictated layoffs are decided and executed a couple of levels above somebody in his position. When he was telling me, and by extension all of you, that nobody is going to pull the plug, that was him being truthful based on the information he had at the time. I wouldn't be surprised if he hadn't heard about these layoffs until Take Two submitted the war notice two days ago. Why am I saying this? Well. I myself once was part of a Fortune 150 company and that's unfortunately how they operate. Somebody with a spreadsheet in corporate HQ adds and subtracts a few lines, changes some values and hundreds of people those spreadsheet warriors have never seen and are never going to see will lose their jobs. I have seen this happen multiple times and I have good reason to believe this is also how it happened to Intercept Games. Not blaming spreadsheets though, I like spreadsheets. Spreadsheets don't lay off people, people lay off people. Whatever the final outcome, things do not look good. Even if they are going to release a calming statement after this video goes live and say that development is going to continue, the four options I listed earlier are still on the table. They are always going to be as long as a big corporation is in charge in the background and can shut KSP down at the moment's notice when a spreadsheet formula tips the scales into that direction. In any case, if KSP2 is really going to be killed, I probably need to find a new thing to make videos about. 
So if you want to keep up with this roller coaster ride, please subscribe or stay subscribed. And if you really want to help me out, you could join as a channel member or become a patron. If you choose the right tier, your name will be listed over here, together with all the other fine folks that believe in what I do. Thank you so much for your support. And to close this out, this is a message to everyone who has lost their jobs or found out that they are going to lose their jobs by some type of war notice or some email from some corporate HQ. I'm sorry this happened to you. I hope you will land back on your feet and find something new and find something better. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.